Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kick Coffee Break, and welcome back to the Coffee Cast Procast Edition, where I am finally going to be bringing you game number two between Complexity Killer, who is spawning here at the nine o'clock position here on Metropolis, and his opponent is going to be the one, the only. I am Nesty. If I could space bar over there, I am Nesty, who is spawning as a Blue Zerg player on the right hand at three o'clock position once again on Metropolis. This is from the IEM. This is a best of three series between these two players. And let me tell you, game one was really exciting. And that's all I can tell you about it because I casted it two days ago and I forgot. Because, as it turns out, this game, I'm going to spoil it. Spoiler alert, this game's a little bit longer. This game's a little bit longer than the last one. And so, you know, I was in between classes. I wanted to cast the next one. I looked at the time and went, uh... That's not happening. So I am finally going to be bringing this for you. We actually have an 11 pool coming out of Nest T here. That is a pretty darn early spawning pool coming out of Nest T. So well, it'll be interesting to see if he decides to uh to capitalize on that somehow. Might be looking to try to maybe a little bit of early aggression with that. Or it might be just beginning the 11 pool because he doesn't want to get pylon blocked at both his natural and his third base. I know a lot of Zerg players have been complaining about that lately. But stuff happened in game number one and Nest T won. That is about all I do remember. So the series is currently 1-0 to zero in favor of our blue Zerg player who I would definitely say is the favored to win this series because Nest T is just really freaking good. And for those of you who don't know, complexity... Mm, I hate to say it like this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and be blunt. They aren't the best team in the world. They they were decent before they died before, and now that they kind of come back to life, they had a little bit of a spurt, and then they just kind of disappeared again. So really, they haven't done all that much since coming back. And I I, I don't know. I can't really name a player off the top of my head that's um. That, that's really good for them. I can't name like a, a star player, I should say, for them. You know, I am obviously Nesty um, MVP. So I, I, I can't really say that uh, Complexity would be a, a big favor to win this. Looks like there are two circles coming across the map. Going to try to scout. Did manage to turn away before that photon cannon could take a pot shot. And everybody is just going to be perfectly fine for the day. I looked over and uh, I looked over at XSplit for a second and I actually had a minor freak out because I thought my microphone wasn't recording. I was going to flip. By the way, I am testing some settings right now. I, I'm playing around the settings a little bit. So if there's a little bit of lag, I do apologize. If there's a little bit of audio issues, I also apologize for that. The audio actually should be better. I noticed that my last couple of videos have been a little bit fuzzy, so I turned down some sensitivity, turned up the... Uh, Turned the bit rate by which it records, and hopefully things will be better with that. Still don't know what's up with the gray screens at the beginning of games. That's just weird. I don't understand. Nest T not going for a very, very fast third base, which is something you'll see a lot of the time. Oh, never mind. Yes, he is. He just got pylon blocked, which is what I was talking about earlier. A lot of Zergs um, getting annoyed, I would say, by that. It's not the biggest, you know, it's not a game-ending thing if that happens by any means, but it is definitely a little bit annoying for the Zerg player, so Nesty going to take a slightly later third than last game, I believe, if I recall rightly, but everything's going to be A-OK -okay for him. Over on the other side of the map, Complexity's Killer does have his natural expansion established, going to go ahead and start mining from that, Chrono boosting his probes, Chronoing the probes, both the gas is taken, everything is pretty darn standard, actually, there we go, there's something a little bit less standard so far in this game. We are going up to four gases very, very quickly for Complexity Killer. Indicate probably some sort of a big tech play coming out of Killer. However, I have seen players before, they will take these two gases and actually leave them dormant. Just so that, uh, if they ever do, when, whenever they are ready to go ahead and really spurt up their tech, they can automatically grab that gas and get going. But no, it looks like Killer is going to go ahead and take both those gases very, very quickly. So I'm going to be interested to see what exactly he is going for with that. What kind of play does he have up his sleeve? We'll just have to wait just a little bit to find out. Robotics is on the way. 
just uh, just to make note of that while we go back and look over at Nesty's base, who is doing everything. Super normal does have two gases taken in his main base. None of that is natural. And this third base, I believe, it just finished up a couple of seconds ago. In fact, probably about 20 seconds ago if this larva inject is any sort of indication. And going to just spawn drones, drones, drones for a little bit. That is the one advantage of that Zerg race, of the Zerg macro ability, is you can get such a huge economy so, so quickly. And we're seeing, even with Chrono Boost, even with a slightly earlier natural expansion, Complexity Killer already falling just a little bit behind in the Harvester count, but that is actually completely to be expected. One thing I would love to see out of uh, pretty much all level of players, professional players, amateur players, everything, I would love to see this Chrono Boost used a little more often. And, I mean, right now, I mean, Killer's not doing bad by any means on that. But you'll actually see a lot of players in that mid-game, they'll get up to 100 energy or, you know, 75 energy. And that, you've got to remember, that is the production capability that you should always, always, always be using, you Protoss players. It's, n it's not as crucial as Larva Inject. It's not as crucial as the mule, but if you're not using that, then you are not using your race's macro ability. So Protoss players, that is just a great little thing to keep in mind. That's something a lot of players don't do, and it actually helps quite a bit, especially in that mid to late game, when you want to start remacroing your army after a little engagements, little skirmishes. A lot of sentries coming onto the field for Killer. We are up to six over here currently. Yep, six total right now. As well as a Twilight Council might be looking to do some sort of gateway push. We are up to four gateways. This is actually just about as standard as you go right now. Is this four gateway and a robotics. Really, we're just kind of waiting around to see what happens after this. If he's going to do any sort of... Um, any sort of big timing push, he'll have to lay down gateways very, very shortly. However, I think with the way this is looking, he might be looking more to go for it. I really need to pay more attention to this production tab. I was about to say he's go looking to do more of a 4-gate robo expand, and that is what he's doing. I'm just sounding like an idiot because I did not see that previously. Ignore that statement. Let's pretend that Coffee Break is paying full attention to this game and actually knows what's going on. There are Zerglings for Nesty coming down here to start picking away at this third base of killers. I believe he has seen that. I would be surprised if he hadn't. Indeed he has. This Overlord no likely, uh, no doubt, no likely. That Overlord is no doubt the perpetrator of that scouting information. A couple of, of observers across the field over here. I love the observer abilities from Complexity Killer. Just he had that very, very, um, back and forth. I'm not using my words right. Uh, he, he was patrolling very well with that observer. Got a nice little bit of scouting information. A few more gateways going down there. What are we having? We are having double upgrades coming out of Killer. And that is going to be going against the Spire of his opponent. Now, uh, Mutalisks, they actually aren't too terribly difficult to deal with as long as you have Storm Templar. Ladies and gentlemen, let us guess what Complexity Killer does not have right now. That is right. No Storm Templar on the field right now. We do have the Twilight Council on the field. So he does have the ability to drop that at any given point in time to start getting those up and going. Blink actually not finished either. So this Twilight Council just kind of sitting around in vain and not really doing anything. I don't know exactly what the point of that Twilight Council is right now. I would love to see Blink out of it, though, as that is something that he needs regardless of Mutalisk at this point in time. Now the Observer is going to fly in and scout this fourth base. Looks like Nesty might be waiting for these Mutalisks to come across the map to reinforce the Zerglings before going ahead and pushing and trying to do a little bit of damage here. Zerglings probably not going to be able to do too much, as there are Zealots and Stalkers sitting here. Oh, I even actually get Changeling there. I believe Killer has obviously not noticed that as that is still sitting there. There's a very nice uh, Force Shield and some gr Force Shields and a great Guardian Shield as well, and that is going to halt that immediately. Mulus and Zergling is going to be picking away at the front wall here, the natural expansion. This upgrade is going to need to get cancelled. That looks like it was the plus three upgrade. Doing this a more, um, more recent style of going for as fast of a 3-3 three, three as humanly, uh, pardon me, as fast as fast as a plus three ground weapons upgrade as possible. That is kind of the current trend of Protoss. And to be honest, don't really know why. I personally personally speaking, have always been kind of a big fan uh, against a composition like this, getting the plus one upgrade, plus one ground, and then going for armor because these units are very low damaging fast attacking units. That's just personal preference, personal opinion. 
Looks like Anesti is not quite done with his aggression yet, as he is coming back down to assault his third base from the side. Does he really have the forces to do all that much damage? Well, it looks like Killer might be a little bit out of position. Some decent force shields do go down. Going to be able to get a few probes here if he so desires. There we go. Great force shields now. Going to completely block off any of these probes from getting sniped by these Zerglings. And that is going to be pushed back, but not before the Nexus is picked off. And that is going to set Killer quite a bit behind. Uh, mining only off of two bases. Main's going to be mined out fairly quickly now as well. And what's on the other side for Nesty? Well, up and coming fifth base. A nice little spine crawler wall. Looks like he's going to max out with more and more Mulisks. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Infestation, but there we go, coming on the field just to get a little bit of more variation in this army, as this is not a very good late game composition. You cannot just do a Zergling Mutalisk as late game. That will just get crushed. So getting those Infestation there will help hold, especially the, the Blink Stalkers in place from being able to get underneath those, those Mutalisks, getting that forge once again, but the plus three weapons is in another castle. The Fun Growth will help hold down those Blink Stalkers in place so that the Mutalists can do work. More Blink Stalkers being morphed into the main to try to counter these Mutalists. But that is a lot of Mutalists. They can actually engage this up front if they do so desire. But here comes the rest of the army for Killer. And Nesty does not quite want to engage all of that. Baneling is coming onto the field as well. That is a great addition. Zergling, Baneling, Muta, and Fester is, in fact, a decent late game composition. Especially if he does decide to go for that Adrenal Glance upgrade. Maybe add in some Ultralis just for a late, late game. Where is the armor for Complexity Killer? Well, it's not in the main base right now, which is getting evacuated. Going to actually be sniping the gases. I love that decision, as the gas is so pivotal at this point in the game. Even though 1100 is actually banked up, that can be spent very, very quickly. Oh no, Nesty, what are you doing? Turning around and trying to engage those stalkers. Losing a couple of free mules there. Banelings are sitting over here just outside the third base. Not going to quite be able to get in with this Colossus and the sentries in position. It looks like he's going to try anyway. Oh, this could be pretty tense here. Mutalus Ball sitting just north north of the main base as well. How is he going to go ahead and engage this? Which army is he going to push first? I'm going to take a drink of coffee. Oh, that was delicious, delicious. More banelings being morphed in here. More zerglings streaming in as well. Is it just going to be pure banelings or is he going to send a couple of zerglings in as well? Not the biggest deal in the world. Mule is going to fly in once again. Snipe a little bit of something over here. I'm not exactly sure what that was. Banelings are prepared. More Banelings on the way. Looks like he might be looking to snipe a couple of Banelings as well. These pylons are in the way. They're going to be helping block off the uh, Banelings in the meantime. Mule is flying into the main base. We're going to be picking off quite a few probes. But Stalkers, so many Stalkers to counter. So many Mutalists. That is going to help uh, Killer quite a bit. Picking off quite a few of those Mutalists there. Now down to, oh no, only 26 Mutalists. Huh. That is a nightmare without any sort of AoE fleet beacon is on the way. And that is going to probably be providing that mothership for the late game Vortex. Oh, the Banelings have been revealed. That probe is denied. And how is the reaction going to happen? Absolutely nothing. There we go, Killer. Repositioning his army just a little bit. Now these Banelings not going to be able to do anything. Needs to get those Banelings out of there if he does not want to waste that supply. But no, just going to be... Oh, great! Four shields! And all the Banelings die right there immediately going down to some great force fields and that Colossus, but in the meantime, more Mulas streaming back into the main base. Where are all the Stalkers? Well, they have, well, they got pulled to go help uh, kill all the Banelings, and now the Mulas, they did pick off quite a few Stalkers, but now the Mulas being whittled down as well by this nice little Stalker ball. A little bit of bank still sitting there for Killer needs to find some way to spend that. Broodlords are going to be going to be coming onto the field fairly shortly. A few Corruptors already being morph morphed in. I, I always say warped for Zerg and morphed for Protoss, and I don't know why. Nesty is in a fabulous position, has spent quite a few drones, uh, uh, converting drones in to spine crawlers. I need to slow down my speech a little bit. I'm doing a lot of... It, uh, uh, oh my goodness! 107 Harvesters? Oh my goodness! Goodness, that is way too many by about 30. On the other hand, his income is absolutely beautiful, but could still definitely used to drop about 30 harvesters. That is a lot of extra units that he is just not having right now, which really makes this supply count completely even at this point. Adrenian Glance is being researched right now. That is going to be a great late game helper for Nesty, especially with uh, uh, remackering armies in the late game after the big, big push where the Protest army dies and the Zerg army, you know, mostly dies. Then you just uh, morph in. I almost said warp again. Just morph in like 
50, 100 Zerglings. Oh no, Mutants might be able to pick off a Colossus. No, Killer getting there just in time. Killer really needs to push out across the map. Now it's kind of this money time. Uh, actually, it's a little bit late for the money time as the Broodlords are about to come on the field and Festers going to be spawning out at about the same time. It's going to be kind of a close call. Mutilus coming into the main base now. Might be able to pick up a few pieces of crucial tech. How many Mutilus are there? Only 16 left. Soccer's being pulled back to the defend. Will it be enough? No! Killer holds for the moment. In the meantime, pushing out across the map. Going to take out the sixth expansion for Nest T, but needs to really find a mining expansion. Try to do a little bit of work, but it's going to be so difficult to penetrate that with the number of spine crawlers on the field right now. So, so many. There we go. Finally dropping 10 supply down just a little bit below 100 harvesters now. Mule is going to be flying back into the main base. I have been keeping my eye on these with all my might just to make sure they don't do something like that. These mutilists are really not going to be able to do too much anymore. Killer is prepared for them with stalkers. Lots and lots of blink stalkers and especially in that main base protecting the crucial tech points like the Twilight which is now uh, helping build the Templar Archive and also uh, like the uh, Colossus Bay and Mule is not that great in a late game army composition. Six days uh, being taken out once again and we... where is it? Where is it? I said, oh, where is it? There it is! We have a Nidus network coming onto the field, and that could pop up pretty much anywhere. I would, If I were to guess, I would say it's going to come up in the main base, but then again, it might just be used to you know, place something right there and just reinforce the ground army very, very, very quickly. It can really go uh, however you want it. Where is that coming up? I see it spawning somewhere. Somewhere. Oh! That's an interesting spot. Might be looking to take an expansion over in this uh, 11 o'clock-ish area to go ahead, throw a drone in there, and just uh, get a mining base going, I guess? That would be my best bet for that. Looks like Nesty, once again, going to be denied a sixth base. Not a big deal at all for him at this point, especially when he is establishing this uh, 11 o'clock base. Going to be just fine. Storm finally coming on the way, as well as Gravitic Drive, which I believe that is the Warp Prism upgrade. Killer really needs to find some way to do some sort of damage to his opponent, and I think a Warp Prism would be a great way to do that. Mm, there are quite a few Spine Crawlers around the map, though. It's just going to be so difficult to find a position to really do some damage. Maybe a Mass Recall with a Mothership? I know that's an unused ability. I mean, that ability is pretty much unheard of, but, you know, might as well. Warp Prism actually has found this base up here. Going to be going into warp mode, warping in a bunch of tellers, taking out that Nidus network. So many Spine Growers being morphed in over here, though. He really wants to hold this base. More Zealots being warped in. Will it be enough to really take this area out, though? I don't know. It's going to be kind of a close call. Going. Oh, wait, that's actually a bunch of... Is that Spore Crawlers or Spine Crawlers? Mostly Spine Crawlers with a single Spore Crawler. That's going to be getting out of here. These are high Templar in here. Those are going to be able to kill a lot of drones very, very quickly. If he can just get them down, it's going to be kind of a close call. There's really no safe landing zone. One high Templar, let's go down. Storms in that middle line, and the drones all die! All the drones just get annihilated there. My God! Goodness, that was just savage. In the meantime, Zealot's going to be able to take out this island expansion. There we go. This is the damage that Killer really needs to start doing. Nesty kind of having a difficult time with this number of Broodlords. That is not a mobile army whatsoever. And I think he's really having trouble finding his engagement angles. Where are his mules to help stop these drops? I... Oh, there they are. I just randomly actually happened to find those. I don't think they're going to be there in time to save this hatchery, though. It's going to be kind of a close-ish call. No. Never mind, that's not going to be close at all. I mean, Killer just planted out one that one. And now Killer is at the dreaded 3-3-3. Three, three, three. He is going to be extremely difficult to kill, especially with that full energy mothership. Even if the uh, the air is 3-3, three, three, or almost 3-3, three, three, for... Uh, Pardon me, for Nest T as well. Those Broodlords, 26 damage per attack. Are there any ground units on the ground? I want to see... I really want to see what his ground upgrades are. Where is that Nidus network? I heard another Nidus network pop out. There it is in the main base. Stalker's getting right on top of that. Going to be killing off the Mutilus and killing off the Nidus worm. Killer staying on top of the game. He is really peaking in this late game point. This is a part of where so many Protosses have so much trouble. Looks like there is going to be one Mutilus over here to defend, but it's not going to be enough with four Zealots. Those do a lot of DPS. Warping in more Zealots over here. Not even going to worry about getting a Stalker for that Mutilus. In fact, warping in four Zealots Picking back up into the Warp Prism and flying off to find another place to do a little bit of damage. 
killer is really testing my instincts as a caster just to keep an eye on the minimap. I don't think I've seen a speck of this game for the last five minutes now. Now, a killer has uh, secured both ir uh, island bases once at least. Looks like Nesty really wants to take these, though not giving up quite yet. Does have Mule's position up here to defend this base, getting the nice network up here as well to be able to reinforce that with something. War Prison coming back up into this top side. We're going to be dropping more zealots off. Just going to kind of uh, warp mode. What are we going to? Are we going to get stalkers to defend against these mutilists? And the answer is no. We are just going to lose the War Prism. But in the meantime, there are more storms being dropped into another expansion of Nesty, losing quite a few drones once again. Now down to 55 harvesters, and that is the signal. Nesty is pissed off now. He's moving out across the map. 26 uh, harvesters killed by Killer, beating Nesty's and Utilisk and Zergling attacks early on in the game. I just want to point out a very pivotal, pivotal point in the game is when all of these banelings were down here and just never really did anything, just ended up dying, and that could have made a huge swing in the game. There are quite a few Broodlords on the field, however, this many Broodlords, believe it or not, can start getting fairly easy to counter, especially when they get clumped up like this, and there is an Archon Toilet just waiting to happen. Only two Archons on the field right now, there's an additional four, six total Archons, full energy on this mothership for two full vortexes. Colossus are on the field as well and quite a few shockers to blink under those blue broodlords if the toilet doesn't quite make it. It's going to be very, very important. This one engagement. The armies are both swinging around each other. It looks like they are actually kind of going ish for an awkward base trade in which Nesty is going to kill Killer's base and Killer's just going to kind of go oh crap and retreat and that's exactly what we're seeing now. Killer advancing back, not advancing. He's retreating all the way back to his main base. Not the greatest positioning for Killer but I think he might have to go for it. A great little wall here of Infested Harris going to keep Killer from being able to get to his army and really reinforce that keeping just enough energy for uh, five or six fun growths left on of those Infestors. These bases are pretty much just going to die I think unless Killer can really make something happen very, very quickly. Going to be marching straight into these Infested Terrans. He has so much AoE right now, though, that these Infested Terrans are going to be very Christian, only with 50 health, going to die almost instantly. One Archon hasn't even gone down yet with those three Plasma Shields. Going to be very difficult to kill those. Where are all the Brewlords? Quite spread out right now. The Vortex is not going to be the most effective, but might decide to do those anyways. Where are the Vortexes? There's one Vortex. Not all the Brewlords going into that, trying to pull those back, but a second Vortex takes them down and trap an, an an additional four or five broodlords in there. Archons are now in the toilet. Where is the flush? Now, actually, target firing a lot of the broodlings. There's the blink under. And here is the flush. Let's watch how fast these suckers die. One flushed right into the other, actually. And bam, bam, bam. All the broodlords die right there. That was actually a very interesting little strategy. Did manage to lose, uh, did manage to take out one mining base of his Protoss opponent, Nesty. Lost a lot of broodlords, though. I want to point out a little bit of action, actually. Oh, uh, no, I can't do that right now. It is 30 minutes in the game. I'm going to come back to that at the end of the game because it was a beautiful 30 minutes in the game. 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. Okay, and with that, Killer doing an impossible feat, actually keeping a lot of his army, going to be able to push out across the map now with a full army instead of having to try to sit back and re-macro at the same time as the Zerg player. It's going to give him a very good positioning. Where is that Nidus Worm? I don't... I really don't know. I... I don't know. Well, if I see a bunch of blue settling in the lower left-hand corner of the map, I'll know where the Nidus Worm was. That Overseer is not going to get away. There we go. The map's blink forward to go ahead and take that out. Army kind of awkwardly split up right now for Killer and needs to make sure to keep it together as he cannot afford to have half his army caught off guard. Really, it's going to be fairly difficult to engage into this though with the number of broodlords already on the field again this number of infestors and this number of spine crawlers it's going to be difficult for him to break and I think that he might just be sitting back and waiting for Nesty to make the next move once again really needs to re some of his harvester He's, he is down to just 40 which is not really all that good of a number if you want to um, stay alive in the late game I mean don't get me wrong you don't want to have too many harvesters but you want to be able to excuse me re your army at any given point in time Oh, uh, finally a chance to take a quick drink. Just going to be uh, continuing to remacro his Broodlord army. Nesty going to have a very, very strong one punch. But again, with the mothership, with the vortexes, going. I, I, I just can't see how this army composition is going to be working out for Nesty. Just pure and fester Broodlord. This is the positioning is getting scouted out by these blink stalkers there. Oh no, the neural parasite on the mothership. 
The Vortex does go down on top with the Terran, uh, party on top of the Protoss army instead. A beautiful strategy by Nesty, and now that mothership just going to be kind of fighting for its dear life, Infest Terrans getting thrown down into that as well. Those army units are going to die instantly to those Infested Terrans, which are going to have so much DPS, and in, in combination with those Broodlings, look at that number, three full pages of Broodlings instantly. And this mothership actually getting caught off guard, just leaving that out to die now. There is no energy left on that. Does not want that to get used against himself once again. The entire Zerg army now cloaked. Killer completely on retreat all the way back home. What is he going to do? I, I'm wondering if he's even going to re that mothership at this point in time. Cannot afford to take another army loss like that. Oh my goodness, the mothership almost actually lived. It looks like Killer has decided that he has had enough. Going to go ahead and engage. There are some storms going down. There we go! Great storms on top of those Broodlords. Losing about half of their health. Nothing over here to go ahead and help regain that health. The Queens, I mean, there are a couple Queens on this army, but not with nearly enough transfuse energy. But there are so many Broodlings on the field. The Starkers are screaming ripped apart in the front line. Colossus trying to do as much work as they possibly can, but there are just so many broodlings blinking under those broodlords. Is there going to be enough? Broodlords are beginning to fall. Where are the reinforcing stalkers though? There just are not that many left on the field. Blinking back behind these archons to soak up a little bit of that extra damage here. Going to need to make sure to jump up and take out the last of these broodlords. They're so close. They're so low on health. Two more broodlords do fall. Five Corruptors being remade, and 90 Zerglings as well! And remember, those are Cracklings, those are Adrenal Gland Zerglings, however, more Archons being warped into the field, and if you guys do not know, Archons are the supreme Zergling killer in StarCraft 2. 35 health on these Zerglings, 47 damage being done per hit. Trying to establish a nexus at this, uh, what is that, like a 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock position, except not the island base. That did not work out too well. Going to be uh, trying to secure a couple of additional bases. Really, once again, needs to get his mining going again. Actually, oh yeah, very, very, very low on minerals. That's why we're seeing this ridiculous number of Archons on the field. 10 Archons. He just has so much gas, but cannot re-macro the minerals down to just 500 harvest on minerals. I wonder if he has just a bunch of probes sitting somewhere. No, he has two idle workers, but that's it. Oh, man, that is not good at all. Really needs to make sure to get on top of that. A lot of Zerglings on the map here. I don't know if Nesty really is going to be able to do all that much for those Zerglings. However, arm positioning is going to be very key for Killer. Once again, these Archons can take those out very, very quickly if they are in the right spot. Looks like Archons are being dropped into the mineral line. A storm goes go down on top of those drones, but does not quite get it in time. Uh, pardon me. The drones are pulled in time. The uh, storm wasn't quite there in time. And the drones do live for the moment. Zerglings going for a counterattack. But it looks like we are getting a warp in of High Templar there. A great warp in High Templar. But oh no! The Archons get forced backwards! Zerglings now streaming into the main base. We'll be able to take out the Robotic Bay. We'll be able to take out the Twilight Council, which ha does not have charge research. Not a big deal in with this certain type of unit composition, however. Zerglings also in the third base as well. Going to be able to take out what is left down here. Where is the army for Complexity Killer? Well, it is just kind of going back and forth. It looks like he can't quite decide what he wants to defend, but Nesty losing so much supply right now, down to just 100 supply. What happened to the armies of the mighty Nesty? 171 to 107 supply, nothing being re -macroed. has plenty of minerals, plenty of larvae as well. Just can't quite decide how to spend that, I suppose. Needs to find something to do. The one worthless nexus is saved now. There's zero gas remaining on either of these guys. There's no um, no minerals as well being mined. Corruptors are being sent over here for some reason. Maybe to be morphed into Broodlords? I don't know exactly what he's going, where he's going with that one. I'm, I'm having problems seeing how Nesty is going to come back in this game. He just does not have any sort of the army composition that he needs. Mothership is coming back onto the field. Killer just does not want to engage all of these spine crawlers, and I can't say I blame him. There are 24 at this front line. Might be able to get maybe a little bit of a blink up over here, but there's really, I guess, just a little bit of tech. There's the greater spy here that would prevent any further broodlers from being made. Looks like the war prism is fly still flying around the map. Might be able to get a great storm off on this mineral line. How many drones are going to die? One, two, none so far. A few, three drones do go down there, and out of energy for storms, unfortunately. And that just didn't quite do maybe quite as much damage he might have wanted to do. 77 workers killed so far by Complexity's Killer. And what was it? 40? 45 by Nesty. So many workers have died. This has been an extremely violent game. Broodlords are, are attacking this bottom right-hand expansion. 
However, they are going to be pushed back momentarily by these stalkers. But the stalkers getting baited up to the front lines here and going to get surrounded by these brutal They cannot range on the brood lords all the way out there. This base is forfeit. There's no way to save it. And really, right now, he's just stalling the brood lords over in that corner of the map. It looks like Killer might be deciding to just go ahead and do it. He has so much firepower. I think he might be able to bust straight through this wall. And let's see what happens here with these archons. Once again, every single single thing, Zerg, including the buildings, do count as biologicals. The archons doing 47 damage a pop to those going to be blowing straight through that wall needs to blink over to take out this one broodlord just so the ai does not get too messed up a lot of queens over here are attacking but that's not going to be that big of a deal looks like we do have a war prism over here doing absolutely nothing don't know why i looked there now and that spine crawler wall has now failed and nesty's last line of defense is gone he does have a few units left on the map about 60 units worth of fighting but how? Whoa, that's just that's just two broodlords versus this entire army of killer 152 to 141 supply. Where are all the armies for Nesty? I just don't get where all his supply is in. I truly don't. A couple of great storms, and there goes the mining for Nesty. Massive number of drones killed. 108 total drones killed now. Just trying to remacro drones. Can't even muster the uh, supply. Pardon me, the larva to remacro the army right now. Killer finally able to break that wall, but having to pull back for uh, for whatever reason. Really, he's out of stalkers. Actually, doesn't really have any anti-air left. A lot of zerglings once again on the field. There's the supply I've been looking for. I finally found it. Looks like there was an Archon over here doing some sort of damage somewhere. But once again, a worthless base. This is a 42-minute game so far, folks. Very, very exciting. This corner base finally has been taken out. This one stalker defending until the very last breath and dies in snowflakes and bubbles right there. Killer is going to be pushing out once again. Does have a few stalkers re into this army. Really, he just has no income at this point. Fin actually, no, he's finally getting back up some income, I should say. I should have checked the tab before I spoke. So he can finally start re a few of his army units. He needs to make sure to kill this spine crawler. Never want to take free shots just for the sake of taking free shots. Where are those Broodlords? Well, they are trying to fly back as quickly as possible. Actually, only one Broodlord left, as I believe the other two were already pulled back. Killer not really pushing out. I, I guess there's really no good area for Killer to attack, as the only mining expansion is up here on this top left side, and he's been doing pretty much all he possibly can with these Warp Prism drops to kill off those drones. Looks like we're going to be having another Warp Prism drop coming in here. One, one, two, three, four, five. How many? That was a lot. 125 workers being killed. In the meantime, Killer going to be pushing up the main lane once again. There is nothing left to attack for Nesty. He is purely on defense, and he just cannot re his army quickly enough. This army for Killer is just deadly. This is a beautiful death ball. Even it is getting a Void Ray mixed in now. I don't even know if that was on purpose, to be honest. And there's the GG by Nesty. My goodness. Oh, give me a second. Huh. Wow. Wow! That was a just a, an absolutely crazy freaking game! Complexity Killer, definitely an underdog versus Incredible Miracles, Nest T, but able to come back in game number two in a 44 minute game to take a win. Now remember, there was a 30 minute point in this game. Right there, right there ish. Where I want to I wanna point out a couple of Vortex. Actually, can I go back like. Uh, just a little bit. Oh, no, not to 27. Okay, I'm going to go back to 27 here and fast forward. If you have not already, I'm just going to give you my quick spiel. Subscribe. Subscribe. That really helps me. Leave a comment below. Take the time to leave a comment. I really, really appreciate it when you guys do that. Kill the game sound for a second. I really appreciate it when you guys do that. It lets me know what I'm doing wrong. Constructive criticism. Always, always welcome. Come on, I'm almost there. I'm at 28 minutes. This is going so slow. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull you over into the game. And... Da -da 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 -da. Pulling around. His army, kind of out of position. Comes back around. Oh, my goodness. I should have just stuck at the 30-minute point. I think that would have worked just fine. Laying down a bunch of this stuff. Okay. Turn the sound back on. And my encoder probably does not like the times 8 speed right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, right there. Right here. I actually, I, I thought there was a, is it control H? I don't know, there's some way to toggle health bar. Oh yeah, it is. Just H. Actually, I want the hit point bars off and it's not turning them off. Whatever. Whatever. So, 
First Vortex goes down. As we can see, there's a fairly good split on the Broodlords right here. And a few have already actually fallen into the Vortex by this point. I'm going to slow down to actually normal speed. So I want to show this. So, now Nessie's going to start pulling these Broodlords back. And another Vortex goes down right on top of that. So now we have two Vortexes down with a total, I don't know, eight maybe Broodlords in here. And... Uh, Killer's really going to want to make sure that he gets the maximum potential of his Archons into these toilets. He wants to get as many Archons into as small of area as possible. So look, once again, at the positioning of these two Vortexes. Right next to each other. This is actually a, there we go. This is actually a slightly better angle. One Vortex here. One Vortex here. So we're going to uh, speed up for a quick moment. Pause, because this Vortex is about to pop. Slow down again. And this vortex is going to pop at some point in time. At some point in time. There, it's going to pop, and immediately everything is pushed back into this vortex right next to it. And we're going to see that it's going to have an absolutely devastating effect here. Just look at how fast. I mean, all the archons, every all the firepower is really focused suddenly into that one small toilet does an incredible amount of damage instead of kind of splitting half your Archons into one toilet, half your Archons into the other. That's really the only point I was trying to make, but I wanted to show that brilliant maneuver by Complexity's Killer because it was beautiful. I'm going to go on to game number three. This is a best of three series. It's kind of late at night, and I want to go to bed soon, and I have calculus, blah, to do, and music theory, blah. So I'm going to get that next game casted, start getting these encoded, and get them online, and I will be back shortly, guys. Check out the next game, because this series has been amazing. This is Coffee Break, signing out.